Ohio State wide receiver Marvin Harrison Jr. is the best wide receiver prospect ever. All that and more in this episode of the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. You are Locked On Dynasty Football, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Here are your hosts, Marcus Mosher and Kate Madjuk. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That is $200 if your bet wins. Just visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. I am your host, Marcus Mosher. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. Joining me today, as always, is Kate Majuk. You can follow her on Twitter at Kate Majuk. You can also read her at Pro Football Focus and Behind the Steel Curtain. On today's show, we are starting our wide receiver prospect profiles. And of course, we're starting with Marvin Harrison Jr. from Ohio State. Kate, what did you uh, see from this, uh, this nice little wide receiver prospect when you turned on the tape? I saw an NFL wide receiver. There's no question about it. Like this man is more pro ready than any wide receiver prospect. I I mean, I Malik neighbors definitely climbing the ranks in terms of, of, you know, draft prospects, but we'll talk about on Monday show, by the way, Malik neighbors on Monday. So make sure you check out that. Yes, definitely circle back. Uh, We're going to be circling through all of these wide receivers, but Marvin Harrison Jr., of course, he's wide receiver one, and I think there's no question for either of us that he is our dynasty wide receiver one in this class, and probably top five dynasty wide receiver overall, including vets, but you know, a, a three-year player out of OSU, he's 21 years old, tw- turns 22 in August, has probably the just most incredible body control and movement that you could imagine for a guy who's six, three and a quarter inches, 209 pounds, that's 86th percentile and 67th percentile for wide receivers, respectively. He's the 2023 Fred uh, Bletkinoff winner led the big 10 in 2022 and 2023 with 13 receiving touchdowns in our, sorry, 14 receiving touchdowns back to back seasons. Led the Big Ten in receiving yards, led the Big Ten and with 18.1 yards per reception. Like you can't ask for much more in terms of what Marvin Harrison Jr. offers in finesse, football IQ, movement skills, route running, just Marvin Marcus, everything about Marvin Harrison Jr. screams pro and looks so natural. We talked about Caleb Williams uh, on our prospect profile, him just being a maestro of the position. And that's the word that I'm going to give Marvin Harrison Jr. He is a maestro of the wide receiver position and just looks so natural in everything he does on the football field. So we're going to discuss his dynasty value, some player comps later on in the show. Um, But just from a overall prospect, I went back since 1990 and looked at the best wide receiver prospects, basically uh, of the last 30 years. And here's the list that I've come up with, Kate. Uh, We've got Jamar Chase in 2021, AJ Green in 2011, Calvin Johnson in 2007, Larry Fitzgerald in 2004, and Keyshawn Johnson in 1996. All of those receivers were drafted in the side of the top five. Marvin Harrison Jr. will join that that list. I think when looking at that list, um, I think he's a better prospect than Jamar Chase. I think he's a better prospect than A.J. Green. I think he's a better prospect than Keyshawn Johnson, who went number one overall in 1996 to the Jets. It comes down to Calvin Johnson and again Larry Fitzgerald. Calvin Johnson's a better athlete. Larry Fitzgerald posted ridiculous numbers uh, when at Pitt or when when he was at Pitt. I think he is right in that tier. And I think you can make a really strong argument that this is the best wide receiver prospect that we've ever seen. There's just, there's not a lot of weaknesses in his game and everything he does, he does at a really high level. I, 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 I really can't find a lot of holes to, to pick in his game. Let's talk about his strengths because we've already mentioned obviously a ton of them, but like the football IQ, just this innate understanding for the wide receiver position. 
the amount of body control and and ball tracking skills that this guy has. And it doesn't matter at what level of the field. You can target him right around the line of scrimmage. You could target him 20, 30 yards down the field. And he he looks effortless. But the route running, you know, we talked about his size at the top of the show. You don't see a lot of guys that are able to run routes as smoothly and effortlessly as Marvin Harrison Jr. when you have that size. The catch radius. I mean, like what are what are his his weaknesses, Marcus? They're few and far between. Yeah, he doesn't really have a lot of weaknesses. I think if you're going to knock him at all, it's he's not the best wide receiver coming out after the catch. Like Malik Neighbors, who we're going to discuss on Monday, is just better with the ball in his hands, right? Uh, and you, if you're watching with us on YouTube, you can see that his yards after the catch numbers are not great. Uh, 36 percentile since 2022. After that, I, I don't really see an issue. And I think what you're going to see from Marvin Harrison Jr. is he's going to be a boundary receiver, an X receiver, who a lot of his targets are going to come down the field in the NFL. So it's not going to be as important that to, for him to make plays after the catch. I, I just want to be clear. like I don't think he is bad after the catch. I think the quarterback situation this year at Ohio State made it look way worse than it was because of the ball placement. It, that's just not necessarily his game, just like it wasn't. AJ Green's game either. Like AJ Green had a near Hall of Fame career and he was only okay after the catch. He just does everything else at such a high level. Use Randy Moss. Randy Moss is another one. Not the most dynamic guy after the catch in the NFL. I don't see it being an issue for Marvin Harrison Jr. either. And I, I think it definitely comes back to, again, that utilization. Then I do want to circle back to talking about the quarterback position at OSU because. Marvin Harrison Jr., I do think in terms of his lack of production after the catch, you have to look at the quarterback play and yep. say that it at least played a part in not being able to maximize yards after the catch. He had a 69.3% catchable target rate in 2023 with Kyle McCord. That ranked in the 37th percentile among wide receivers this year. I do think that generally speaking, even for you know some of those balls that we're going to call catchable placement isn't always optimal. Like no, you could have a no. catchable ball, but that doesn't mean it's optimal ball play placement to maximize yards after the catch. Sometimes the ball is catchable, but it's just slightly behind and you see Marvin Harrison jr. Have to adjust. Um, or sometimes it's really behind. Sometimes it's far over his head. Like, and the thing is Marvin Harrison is so good. He can make those plays. Like, it, he can adjust for some of those inaccuracies as a, of a quarterback, which I, I think really translates to the next level because he's going to be able to play with any quarterback. It doesn't matter. You know, I'm I'm projecting him going number four to the Arizona Cardinals. But if he's not playing with Kyler Murray, no problem because he, no, he can play with an inaccurate quarterback and he can make that quarterback better. But in terms of like a quarterback with good ball placement, if he is a quarterback with good ball placement, I mean, Marvis, Marvin Harrison Jr. might be an all pro as a rookie. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me at all. Like, he's got that much talent. I think he's pretty quarterback proof, is probably what you're trying to say here. But if you can pair him with an elite quarterback or a very good quarterback, I think that's what's going to really unlock the fantasy production where, you know, he's getting. 11 to 12 targets a game and his a dot is you know over 12 because he's just getting these targets down the field he's effective and he's a red zone weapon because of his size his long arms his body control um so much to like for marvin harrison jr let's dive into the numbers because of course we've got to look at the analytics you and i both writing for pff uh, i gotta say the analytic the numbers for marvin harrison jr not bad we will get to that next This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. What's the first thing that you would do if you had an extra hour in your day? Would you go for a run? Would you take a nap? Would you read a book? A lot of us spend our lives wishing that we had more time. The question is, time for what? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? The best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedule is to know what's important to you and make it a priority. Therapy can help you find what matters to you so that you can do, go and do more of it. 
If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's done entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for any reason at no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Just visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOn today to get 10% off your first month. That is BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash LockedOn. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. We want to let you know about Locked On Sports today. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Do you have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you some of the biggest stories without all that screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news, streaming 24-7 on YouTube or on the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, Kate, let's dive into the numbers with Marvin Harrison Jr. And as you would expect, they're very good. Yeah, big shocker. Uh, you know, the this generational prospect, uh, son of generational wide receiver, Hashtag really good at football. I don't, I don't know if I'm breaking any news for anybody, but 92.3 overall PFF receiving grade over the past season that ranked fourth among wide receivers with 70 plus 75 plus targets over the past two years in that span at 2,500 receiving yards, like 28 receiving touchdowns. I mean, you could not ask for much more than Marvin Harrison, but like as impressive as his overall stats are the the advanced metrics all the more impressive uh 94th percentile in receiving grade 89th percentile in separation rate 95th percentile in yards per route run and all the while i mentioned that catchable target rate marcus that catchable target rate ranked in the 48th percentile for wide receivers over the last 2 years there's not much that he can't do. And that's what is so incredible about Marvin Harrison is that there is no mismatch between the tape and the analytics. No, his, his prospect profile is pretty seamless because what you see on the stat sheet is generally what you're going to get on the football field. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I, I, I don't have a lot to add in here. Like, even if we're going a little bit beyond that, like the college dominator rating, 33%, which ranks in the 64th percentile, breakout age, 20.1, 60th percentile, college target share, 87th percentile. And that's despite playing with a bunch of NFL receivers over the last three years. I mean, he literally just checks every single box. The only one is the yards after the catch per reception. Like that's the only really stat that you can find. Yeah that is slightly below average. Everything else is outstanding. And we, we talked about his game, like his style is not to win on a four yard pass and take it to the house. That's just not how he wins. How he wins is being a vertical threat who can run the entire route tree. Who's going to win on passes above his head. He's going to create separation down the field. He's going to catch everything that you throw at him. It's really, really hard when you look at Marvin Harrison Jr. to try to find a reason why you think he's going to fail in the NFL. And another thing that I wanted to mention really quickly is what we've seen over the last, I mean, last 20 or 30 years is that these players that are like second generation football players tend to have a lot of success. Or if you have the, the family bloodlines, because you're just around the game a lot. Like Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to walk into an NFL locker room and it's not, nothing's going to surprise him, right? He's been around locker rooms his entire life. He knows what it takes to be a Hall of Fame level receiver because his dad was a Hall of Fame level receiver. He knows uh, what your the work week is going to look like. He knows what the meeting structure is going to work be like. Nothing is going to surprise him. And that just builds up his floor where I, I would be shocked, Kate, absolutely shocked if Marvin Harrison Jr. entered the NFL and assuming with good health isn't like a, an 1100 yard six touchdown receiver right away like things would have to go so poorly poorly for him and I just I don't see that happening I I, I think he's going to be a stud right out of the gate yeah I mean Marcus it, again like his skill set just can fit absolutely anywhere I mean you look at his contested a cat contested catchability I mean just 
so strong at the catch point and, and I mean, 32 contested catches over the past two seasons ranks second among wide receivers. Um, you look at the explosive plays, 69 plays of 15 plus receiving yards wow. over the past two seasons that ranks third among wide receivers. I mean, just every element of his game is so clean and crisp. And that is why it doesn't matter where he goes, but you know, obviously a, a, plen a an opportunity at a plentiful target share is going to help, but he 1100 receiving yards and six touchdowns feels like a floor season for Marvin Harrison jr. And it's, I mean, it, it sounds kind of crazy. It sounds, uh, hubris, mm -hmm. but it's not. No. Nope. And that's, that's why I'm so excited about Marvin Harrison Jr. I wanted to mention one other thing that makes me feel very confident about Marvin Harrison Jr. We mentioned that you and I both believe he's an outside X receiver, but it's not like that's exclusively where he's played in college. We do have a good sample size of, uh, of at least 110 snaps over the last three years playing in the slot. And again, I don't think that's going to be a full-time role for him. I bet he plays in there. 10% of the time in the NFL, but the experience of being able to move around, being able to play all three receiver positions, just again, makes me feel very, very confident as opposed to some of these other receivers that have come, even the, the elite receiver prospects that have exclusively been a slot receiver or have exclusively been an outside receiver. Uh, I, I just think he's pretty scheme proof that way as well. Yeah, I, I don't think anybody that listens to this podcast is going to have any trouble finding the pluses for no, Marvin no, Harrison Jr. here. No, uh, I want to talk about his dynasty value because that's really intriguing to me right now. And I want to talk about some player comps for him because if we're calling him arguably the greatest wide receiver prospect ever, the comp should be pretty good. We will get to that next. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tournament, whether you're betting on a big upset or a number one seed. It's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book right now. New customers can get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That is $200 to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. This is one of my favorite times of year. I love just sitting at home and watching basketball games all day long. It's so much fun. So again, go check out FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on all of the college hoop action this week. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. We are discussing Marvin Harrison Jr., the number one receiver in the 2024 class, at least to me. I know there's other people out there that maybe like Malik Neighbors a little bit more. Again, we'll get to him on Monday. But, Kate, let's dive into his dynasty value and some player comps. Did you have a good comparison for him? You actually mentioned it earlier in the show, but I think it's a perfect one, and it is A.J. Green for me. Yeah. And yeah. I, I especially like this comp because I think it demonstrates the the way that, you know, the yards after the catch uh, in, again, we talked about all of his advanced metrics. Yards after the catch is really the only place he didn't shine. 36 percentile among wide receivers and yards after the catch per reception of the past two seasons. I think AJ Green is a perfect demonstration of why it just doesn't matter like you can have play strength, size, physicality, and finesse. And if it doesn't translate to yards after the, after the catch, that's okay because it's the utilization that matters. I, I could very easily see the, the trajectory right off the bat, like it, but still better than AJ green. I don't know. Yeah. I, that that's my comp as well. There's just so many similarities there. He was just far more productive than what AJ green was. AJ green did not play a ton at Georgia. The, uh, there was a scandal, I believe in the 2010 season that caused him to only play a couple of games, but he's just more polished than AJ green coming out. Um, and I think he's more pro ready. So a more polished version of AJ green, that's sign me up. That calm. sounds great. That's, that's terrifying. Yeah. Uh, let's get to his dynasty value because frankly, I'm puzzled. Uh, I, 
I don't understand why his dynasty value is currently as low as it is. Here are the receivers that are currently being drafted ahead of Marvin Harrison Jr. It's Justin Jefferson, C.D. Lamb, Jamar Chase, Amon Ross, Satan Brown, and A.J. Brown. The other non-receivers are going ahead of him are B. John Robinson, Brees Hall, and Christian McCaffrey. I made my list, Kate, before we jumped on of the players that I would take over Marvin Harrison Jr. And it is, it, it is Justin Jefferson, and then I'm stopping. <laughs> I was actually, I, I was, I, we, we didn't uh, discuss our list of players here before the show. So I was actually waiting for a second name, but no, you're a hundred percent right. I mean, I don't think there's, there's any player here that's has as safe a floor with as significantly high an upside. He's 21 years old. I mean, yeah. ranking him behind AJ Brown, I can't. It ever doesn't make any and, sense to me. No, there's no, no it doesn't make any sense, especially to me. with it, his injury history. It, it absolutely makes no sense. And for as much as I love a monitor St. Brown and the, the diverse skill set that he offers and Jamar chase, like, you know, I, I just think that there's probably no wide receiver on this list outside of Justin Jefferson that I think is as quarterback proof. And I'm going to, I'm going to say that I think the moment Marvin Harrison steps on the field, like he's as pro ready as the rest of this group of veterans. And again, I just feel like I'm spilling hubris from, I know, I know I, I'm it, everything I say sounds so ridiculous, but it's all I, true. I will say the, the one receiver for me that gave me a little bit of pause is CD lamb. And I think this just depends a little bit on where you're at with your dynasty team. I think CD lamb is just more likely to have like be the number one receiver in the 2024 season, he's also only 24 years old. So like, if you want to put CD ahead of Marvin Harrison jr, completely understand that he had 1800 yards last year, 1400 yards the year before, but like the running backs here, Kate, that we mentioned, listen, I love Brees or I love Bijan Robinson. I really like Brees Hall. Christian McCaffrey is going into his age 28 season with a pretty significant workload and a significant injury history. There, there's just no way that I would take, Christian McCaffrey over Marvin Harrison Jr. I, I I think that's ludicrous. So I think this is the the direction this conver conversation needs to head, Marcus. In a single quarterback league, where are you drafting Marvin Harrison Jr.? Because my answer is pretty clear. Uh, two or three. Yep that that is where I'm at. The one sticking point I have is where do I want to draft Bijan Robinson, and. For me, in the top three, it's Justin Jefferson, it's Marvin Harrison Jr., and it's Bijan Robinson. And I I feel like just based on the positional value of wide receivers, I want to put Marvin Harrison Jr. Uh, head of Bijan in those ranks. But I mean, he's a he's an automatic top five pick. Let's talk about in super flex because yeah. maybe that's where things get a little bit more interesting and you can make more arguments about, you know, quarterback value versus wide receiver right now um, for context, you know, in dynasty ADP for the month of March, top six picks are all quarterbacks. We've got Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Jalen hurts, Lamar Jackson, CJ Stroud, Joe Burrow. And then we have our first wide receiver off the board in Justin Jefferson at seventh overall so I want to I want to mention something. I, I was out to dinner uh, on Friday, and I had a buddy of mine call me because he's do, he's doing a dynasty draft on Saturday uh, before the dynasty rookie draft before the the draft. Which I think it's, it's awesome. so fun, it's so great. fun. Super flex league. He has the number one pick. He was debating on Caleb Williams versus Marvin Harrison Jr. And that's really difficult for me. Like I I think that really depends on your league. I told him to go Caleb just because finding those elite quarterbacks are so difficult. Right. But I also can make an, an argument for Marvin Harrison jr. As well. I think Her Marvin Harrison is a little bit underrated in super flex leagues. I think he's going a little bit too, too late, but I do understand why so many quarterbacks are going ahead of him. It's just kind of the nature of the beast in super flex leagues. Yeah, obviously on, on any given week, a quarterback could have a, a disastrous outing and outscore a top 12 wide receiver exactly. in, in most instances. Yeah. So I, I definitely understand it, but I still think regardless of format, you can make an argument that Marvin Harrison Jr., the wide receiver two in Dynasty right now, 
And, you know, I think you could have some debate, but I don't think you can have a, a, a ton of debate. Um, I want to ask you a question before we go. Let's say the Vikings don't draft a quarterback. Somebody jumps them and they're rocking with Sam Darnold as their quarterback this year. And we get I'm making all this up. We get Marvin Harrison Jr. going to the Chargers at five. For whatever reason, the Cardinals trade that pick and somebody jumps up and takes J.J. McCarthy. Would it shock you to see people put Marvin Harrison Jr. as their number one dynasty receiver if he is linked up with a Justin Herbert? Absolutely not, especially considering the lack of weapons there. Like, yeah. I, I totally understand that. But I also don't want to discount, like, the fit with, the Arizona oh, I, Cardinals because that's a great fit, but I'm thinking like if you put him with Herbert, who I, I think can maybe do a little bit better job of feeding him again, I think Kyler is a net positive fit, but I think Justin Herbert is one of the quarterbacks that could, could unlock him. I, I mean, I, I think he, he could be in the conversation for wide receiver one. I think you and I both agree. He is closer to wide receiver one than he is wide receiver five, which is right about where he's being drafted right now, which I think is silly. Marcus, I am generally more of a, I'm going to say an even keeled dynasty manager. I'm usually like a little bit hesitant to go all in on a player's value. I love to see on the field production, but I just, there's nothing that I can find in Marvin Harrison Jr.'s profile that has me stepping back. Cause yeah. even like we said, the yards after the catch, I don't care. That's not, that's not what makes him so successful as an NFL wide receiver. Like he succeeds in spite of it. There's nothing I can find that doesn't have me ranking him. Like you said, closer yeah. to closer to wide receiver one, the wide receiver five at this point. And I'm ready for the ride. All right. That is it for today's show. We want to thank you for making Locked On dynasty. Your first listen every single day. Go check out the YouTube channel. We post videos every single day over there. Go download the podcast wherever you get your podcasts. We are free and available on all platforms. Go follow Kate on Twitter at Kate Majuk. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosier. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you back here on Monday to discuss Malik Neighbors. See you then.